Hello and good morning. This is take two. We're going to answer these questions. And here we go. So, you get the average constituency. You take this, the number of patients, divided by how much help you have. When you do that, you get this. To get the absolute unfairness, you add one right here. And when you add one, it's going to be 100 divided by 51. 300 divided by 101. So you take your calculator. When I do that, I get 1.96. And then over here, 300 divided by 101. I get 2.97. Okay, so once you get to that point, you have to go ahead and uh, subtract. Or, in this case, you're going to take this one minus that one. So, 1.96, it's going to be a negative, we're going to change it to a positive, minus 3. When I do that, I get 1.04. And on this one, I'm going to take that one minus that. So 2.97 minus 2. And I get 0.97 for the absolute unfairness. So the absolute unfairness is here and here, and that's after you subtract. To get the relative unfairness, you're going to divide the absolute divided by that right there, the average constituency, the new one. So it's going to be 1.04 divided by 1.96. And then this one is going to be 0.97 divided by 2.97. If you do your work like this, you shouldn't have a problem. So 1.04 divided by 1.96, and I get 0.53 for the relative unfairness. So in this one, 0.97 divided by 2.97, and I get 0.32. So who gets the extra help? It's this one because it's smaller than that one. There it is. We're going to watch some videos here on the population paradox and the new states paradox. Make sure you take note. And then we're going to do that worksheet that I had planned on doing yesterday, but kids were testing for the PSAT. So the date here is going to be changed for some time. There it is. And we'll talk about how to do some of these together. Let's turn our attention now to college algebra. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so on college algebra, I guess I got to give you a couple of Bellworks problems here. So let me find some here. Okay, so go ahead and uh, solve this equation. Let's see what we're going to do. work those two. So this one right here, I would move this to the other side. So I'm going to get 6x to the fourth equals 54x squared. Then I'm going to divide by x squared. And when I do, two of these are going to drop off. Okay, we're going to divide by 6. and then take the square root. So it's going to be plus or minus 3 because of the square root of 9. 
this equals three. On this one right here, you're gonna move this to the other side. And then you're gonna take the fourth root of 81. So you get your calculator and you do that. Now, I think I see it here on my calculator. Okay, see it's way down there, X and then the radical sign. Clear it out, press second, and then that. And uh, I think we might have to do it a little differently. So let's try four, and then second, and then that. Okay, the fourth root of 81. That should work. It should be three. And that's how you do that. Okay, so figure it out on your calculator. If you need some help, I can try. And there it is. All right, today we're going to talk about these. So copy down that problem. All right, so what we're going to do is substitute u equals x squared. So we're going to have u squared minus 3u plus 2 equals 0. Then we're going to factor this. Okay, So it's going to be u1 and u2, both negatives equals zero. Then you're going to set each one of these equal to zero. Those are called factors, okay? So u minus one equals zero and u minus two equals zero. You're going to move this over and you're going to get u equals one and u equals two and then you're going to substitute back in what u equals, which is x squared, which is what we really want. So x squared equals one and x squared equals two. So x equals plus or minus one that's two answers, right? Plus and minus. And then this one, x equals plus or minus the square root of 2, which I think is 1.4, I'm not positive. So there it is. And that's how you do that one. Copy this one down. What you're going to do on these is isolate the radical. So you're going to move this to the other side. You're going to get this by itself. So step one is isolate the radical. Step two is to get rid of this one, which is a square, so you want to square it, or the square root, and then this cancels, so you get 2x plus 7 equals, then you got to do FOIL, x times x, x squared, x times 2 is 2x, times 2 more makes 4x, and then 2 times 2 is 4, and then you got to solve this equation. So I would put 0 here, and I move the 2x over, so I get x squared that becomes a negative 2x, so 4 minus 2 is going to be 2x, and then I'm going to move the 7 over, which becomes a negative 7, which gives me a negative 3, and then I'm going to try to factor that, and I think it does factor, 1 and 3, we want a plus here and a minus here, you're going to set both of these equal to 0, and finish it off, x plus 3 equals 0. So you're going to get 1, and you're going to get negative 3. And those are the answers. So step 1 is isolate the radical. So move that over, and then square it. you got to do FOIL. Now, I did FOIL in my head. You might have to write it out. Copy that down right there. Okay, so what this really is is the cubed root. See that bottom number? This is really the cubed root of x minus 4 quantity squared equals 25. So the first thing I would do is rewrite it. The bottom number becomes the index. So we want to cube this side to get rid of it. So we want to cube this side to get rid of that. So this cancels. So you get x minus 4 quantity squared equals whatever 25 times 25 times 25 is. Now that one right there, I'm just going to look in the book. So that one is 15,625. And then you're going to go ahead and go ahead and take the square root to get rid of it. So you get x minus 4 equals whatever the square root of 15. That's going to be plus or minus 125. Then you're going to bring this over. So it's going to be 4 plus 125, right? That becomes a positive. And then 4 minus 125. 
and then you can finish it up. So that's 129. This one is going to be a negative 121. Okay, there it is. And that's how you do that. This one right here, I would isolate this. Same way, move this over. Step one is isolate it. And then square, square, this cancels. So you get 5x equals 100. Divide by 5, and you get 20. And that should be it. All right, this one right here is the cube root, so copy that down. I would isolate it and move the 4 over here. So I'm going to have the cubed root, and that's a negative 4. So it's the cubed root, so we want to cube it. And when you cube it, you're going to get 2x minus 9 equals a negative, right? Three negatives, negative, 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 that was positive. So you end up with a negative. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, I think it's 64. And then you solve this. Move this over here. So you're going to add 9, and then you're going to divide by 2. There it is. Okay, one more. Copy this one down. Well, since you have two of these, I would move one of these to the other side. Okay? And we're just going to look in the book and see how they work that way. And we'll go through the steps. And actually, this one right here, I think, is one of your problems today. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so on this one right here, what you want to do is move this to the other side. So you're going to get the square root of x equals the square root of x minus 24 plus 2. Then you're going to square both sides. Okay, so step one is to move one of the radicals to the other side. I move this one. This cancels, so I get x equals. This you got to do FOIL. Okay, so when you do FOIL, you're going to get this. You're going to get whatever that is. So it's going to be this times this is going to be x minus 24. This times this times 2 is going to be a negative uh, it's going to be, let me think here. Okay, so first of all, when we moved it over, let me start again. Okay, so when we move this over, it should have become a negative. So let me back up. So that should be a negative square root of x minus 24, like that. So now when you square it, this cancels. Okay, now you're going to do FOIL. So 2 times 2 is going to give you 4. This times this times 2 is going to be a negative 4 square root of x minus 24. And then this times this is going to be a plus all of this. So that's going to be x minus 24. And then you got to combine like terms. When you do, you're going to get, um, let me look at it, you're going to get, when you move stuff around, you're going to get 20 equals negative 4 square root of x minus 24. Okay, at this point, you're going to divide by that 4, okay, and so I guess you could have divided by negative, so this is going to be 5 is equal to negative, and then this cancels, so you're going to get the square root of x minus 24. At this point, you're going to square both sides, which you could have just divided by that negative, okay, so you're going to get 25. A negative times a negative is going to be a positive. And when you square this, you're going to get the inside, which is x minus 24. Then you're going to move the 24 over here, which becomes a plus 24, which gives you 29. So this one required a little bit of work. And be careful. So what you're going to do is move one of these to the other side. I moved this one, and then I squared both sides. I had to do FOIL. Okay, remember that the square root of x minus 24 times the square root of x minus 24 is going to give you two of these. So it's basically x minus 24, or the square root of that, squared, because you have two, so it cancels, leaving you with the inside. Here's today's work right here. If you get stuck, just ask for help. Have a good morning.